The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the June 24th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon, although it's just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. So if you are listening live at 8, between 8 and 9, we would love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Now, make sure if you're listening between 1 and 2 and you send me an email, I won't be able to get back to you. I won't be in front of my uh, screens out there. But if you are listening live, you can send an email to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tigers, then will any and every ping will do, but Stevie prefers those private ones. Just makes it a little bit easier to keep track of your requests. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got U.S. equity futures all trading higher. The Dow's up about uh, seven tenths of a percent. That's 226 points. NASDAQ 100, eight tenths or 95 points. The eight tenths for the ES Mini, that's 29 points. The Russell's up by uh, nearly nine tenths. That's about uh, 14 to 15 points to the upside. Spot Volatilics is trading down 32 pennies. It is uh, quickly approaching its 50-day exponential moving average. We'll take a look at that. If we look at what took place overnight, uh, Asian markets and Australian markets closed higher. Uh, the Hang Seng up by a little over 2% out there. If we look at what's going on in Europe via the DAX and the FTSE, they're both up over 1%. The uh, DAX is up 1.5%. Gold's back 2 bucks, trading out at 18.27. Silver's off 22 cents. She's trading at 20.81. You've got 30-year um, treasuries uh, nearly down 1 point. It's off 26 ticks, trading out at 136.09. Um so that's what's going on in the markets. But what does all that mean? I'll tell you what it all means. Let's start. Let's make sure that we go come back and understand where we're at, how we got here, why we're here, what the markets are communicating to you and I. So we'll look at a couple of different things. Very first thing, if we take a look at the cash indices, you'll see the A to B equals CD down patterns. Now, each of these have completed, with the exception being the Russell 2000. And we'll come back to the Russell 2000. Each of them have buy the D point patterns out there. By the D point patterns typically have five different outcomes. The first outcome being a 0 0.382. For example, let's take a look at a buy the D point pattern example for the uh, S&P 500. So we're looking at the cash indice out here. So the five different outcomes are, four of them are retracement levels. So let's go ahead and take a look at those retracement areas. These become possibilities, uh, likely possibilities of price target areas. So we're going to go from the high of the A to B equals CD pattern down to the uh, low out here. So the first level, this would be quite a, a move out there, uh, would take us up to the 4088 area. Again, we're going from the top at 4818 down to the low at 3636 out there. That's just considered a dead cat bounce. That would kind of be nothing. So you've got the confirmed by the D point pattern. The cash indice would suggest that price should target the 4088 level out there. If we take a look at the equity future contracts, we have really the same A to B equals CD down patterns. Three of them, the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow, all confirming with bullish reversal candles. Now, here we have some different levels to be paying attention to. These levels are the profile areas. Profiles help us understand currently where we have both buyers and sellers. In the case of the ES Mini, in other words, the S&P 500 out here, what we can see is prices quickly approaching the top of its daily profile. That's where the sellers are hanging out. They're hanging out at 3842. 
We're trading at 38.29. We've been up to a high of 38.34. Odds favor that price is going to go tackle that uh, 38.42 level. Now, if price is able to close above that, that's giving us a change in trend signal, and that would add to the idea of doing a 0 0.382 retracement. Well, Stevie, what's a 0 0.382 retracement of the ES Mini? Great question. Let's go ahead and let's put that in here. So now we're going to have a second target for where price, and I just say there's five different potential targets. You'll see that those four out here are the retracement levels, a 0 0.382, which in the case of the ES Mini would say 4082 would be a price target. Now, a normal move would be a 0.618 retracement. That would get you up to the 43.56. Am I saying that's where price is going? No, I'm not saying that at this stage here. The first level that price needs to overcome inside the ES Mini is closing above the 3841 level. The Russell 2000, as I mentioned, as you can see here, that's the uh, lower right-hand panel, did not complete or has not completed that same A to B equals CD structure out here. Does that mean that it hasn't bottomed? No, it doesn't. Because what the Russell 2000 has done is this generated a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern out here. And that uh, took place uh, about four days ago on Tuesday when there was a Three River Morning Star pattern. It's a bullish reversal candle. That's how we confirm tops or bottoms. In this case here, bot uh, bullish reversal candles are to confirm bottom patterns out there. And I really suggest you use it for whatever patterns it is that you trade out there. That is how the market communicates to us. Bullish and bearish reversal candles at the completion of a pattern. They're just kind of interesting to see during the pattern out here. So you've got bottom patterns across the board, basically for all the indices, all the daily time frames. In fact, in the case of the uh, NQ and the NASDAQ composite, they may form, not just did they form uh, bottoms last week, uh, but they may form, uh, uh, they may form, Rhodes indicator bottoms well this week. They're generating the bullish reversal candle. And odds favor that the markets are going to finish higher today. Why does Stevie say that? I say that because if we just take a look at what's going on across the globe out there, pretty decent indication. You've got Europe that closed, that's right now trading higher, likely to close higher out there. You've got Asia that uh, closed higher last night. No reason to think that the U.S. markets won't do the same. But You've got the ES Mini that is approaching resistance. It'll be the first one to test that resistance at the top of its daily profile. While that is going on, we have the Spot Volatility Index, which is trading right now still above, slightly above, more than slightly above, its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day exponential moving average, let's uh, pull this little data box where you can actually see it. So the 50-day exponential moving average is sitting at 2809. Price is trading at 2871. So in essence, what we've got here is a convergence of Spot Volatility Index, pulling down to a key level of support. That's the 50-day exponential moving average. We don't care what it's priced at. It doesn't matter whether it's 40 or whether it's 10 or whether, in this case here, it's 2809. We just want to understand where is price in relationship to that 50-day exponential moving average. So you've got the ES Mini that's going to be approaching resistance and the spot volatility index, which is going to be approaching support. From a bullish standpoint, you want to see support on the spot volatility that 50-day fail. And, of course, you want to see the top of that daily box inside the ES Mini fail as well. Don't know whether that will happen or not out here. But uh, price is going to uh, – there's, there's no signals out here that I see on the intraday charts to suggest that price shouldn't at least go tack, tackle the top of that profile. I believe that was a 38.42 level on the ES Mini. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, up, folks. So I mentioned the NQ, NASDAQ, uh, 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 and the NASDAQ Composite. The, uh, so the NDX 100, the NASDAQ Composite, the NQ on a weekly basis. So we're looking at, and I'm just going to expand out the chart here just so uh, you can just uh, focus on just the NQ. So what we have going on out here right now is you can see that there was a TD9 count bottom that formed last week. There was a wave 7 bottom. That's the letter G out there. So you had two bottoms. Does it matter whether we have two or three? No, but it does tell you. Um, uh, what the market's intentions are. And now we've got a bull sash candle. In fact, if price closes above last week's uh, uh, open, last week's open was 11.810. We're at 11.834 right now. You're going to get a confirmed road momentum indicator bottom. So the mar if you're questioning whether or not the markets are bullish for this moment or whether they're trying to form bottom or whether they have formed a bottom, here's the answer. The answer is absolutely. You can't ask me to do this show, talk about A to B equals CD down patterns, how they actually form and complete, at whether it's the 1 to 1, 1 to 1 1.272, 1 to 1 1.618, whatever the uh, level is out there. And then when they do form to somehow say, eh, ignore it. No, don't ignore it. Now, in the case of the NQ, what you can't see is on my daily time frame, price is likely going to go target the top of its profile as well. The reason is because price is above its oscillator and change line, which, by the way, the chart that you're looking at, the oscillator and change line, is that green red squiggly line, 12403. On a weekly basis, price is going to go target that line. Now, the line may move lower while price is moving higher, vice versa, but for generally speaking, that is where price is headed. Now, you can see on a weekly basis, that since the high that was put in, we've only seen a one-week close above that oscillator and change line. One hit wonder out there. But that's where price is targeting. That's the natural resistance level. But first stop on the NQ is likely going to be 12037. Now, 12037 is the top of its daily profile. And this is where it really kind of gets interesting because the ES mini is getting very close to the top of its profile. And so is, price, is the ES mini just going to stop? and wait for the uh, NQ to get up there? I, I don't know the answer to that, but it's something for us to watch and observe. So on a weekly basis, you got a very strong message with regard to the NQ. The last piece of the puzzle for the NQ becomes its market profile, market breadth out there. I'm not sure that's exactly how I meant to say it, but it is how I said it. Here we're taking a look at the daily time frame for the NASDAQ 100. 
And what this does is it takes a look at each of the instruments that are in there, about 104, 5, 6, 7, like that. And uh, what it does is it uh, takes a look at where is price trading in relationship to those profiles. So when we took a look at those profiles earlier, the top is where sellers are residing. The bottom is where buyers are residing. The center, which gravitates, doesn't mean just because we call it the center, it's just wedged in between the top and the bottom, doesn't mean it's trading right at the center. Sometimes it does. In other words, the midpoint. But oftentimes, that center line is closer to the top or closer to the bottom. In this case here, it was closer to the bottom inside the ES Mini. And uh, in fact, in the NQ, uh, both the bottom and the uh, center are at the same price, telling you about strong support down at that 11,396 area out here. But here is the deal. Those profile levels, when price is trading above the top of the profile, conditions are assumed to be bullish. And when price is trading below the bottom, because it would be below support, conditions are presumed to be bearish. Well, if we take a look at all the instruments inside the NASDAQ 100, and this is as of 8.22 in the morning, what we can now see is we have 30 instruments that are trading above the top of the profile and 30 instruments that are trading above the bottom. In other words, we've got kissing cousins right now, or maybe it's hopefully it's more than kissing cousins. But uh, price is – so we're going to see – now, if we get that to flip today, when I say flip, what I mean is you get more instruments trading above the top versus trading below the bottom – that is going to be a bullish crossover and tells you to prepare for a bullish market and not to be shorting this market. Not just yet. Not until the next pattern sets up. And the next pattern of just simply trading up into resistance the top of the profile is likely not it. I can't guarantee anything, but I can guarantee you one thing. If we see this NASDAQ 100 crossover to a bullish mode, it's likely not for a one-day wonder out here. So you want to pay attention now with regard to the S&P 500, it's got a bit more work to do. So if we take a look at the S&P 500, we go to its uh, daily time frame. What we're going to see as we speak, and this is as of 8.23 in the morning, we have a total of 122 instruments trading above the top of their profile, 171 trading below the bottom. So what this does tell us is we should see the uh, ES Mini get up to that resistance level, the top of that profile, and probably pause there while the NDX 100 and the others perhaps move higher out there. So what we've got is uh, likely very bullish conditions inside the NQ, and we'll just simply have to wait to see uh, what takes place inside of the ES Mini. Let's go out to our first caller. It's John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Steve, I'm very, uh, very well. Thank you for doing the show. Uh, I must confess, I, uh, I much... Uh, I much uh, like, I won't say I prefer, but much like you're doing the 8 a.m. show, giving you good preparation for the day ahead. So this is just terrific, so I thank you. Um, you're welcome. Steve, I uh, would just merely supplement things you have just said about the, uh, the NASDAQ uh, 100 index by just um, emphasizing that low last week, I think it occurred on the 16th, uh, on the weekly chart, of course, that formed a patented Basil Chapman wave leg G lower. Yes. Uh, it looks like that's going to be a trough G. And then I also have to thank uh, former Denner, uh, Saratoga Bob, who was a uh, uh, a student excuse me, a yes, student yes. of Basil Chapman's, attending uh, live in-person uh, workshops with Basil in the Boston area long ago. And yes. Saratoga Bob came up with the Chapman Wave Trough G buy signal, trading signal that he used when he was in the den for a good many years. I saw him use that uh, live in real time on all time frames, weekly, daily, Yes. Five hour, two hour, hourly chart. Uh, so that is in place at the low last week in the NASDAQ 100. Yes. And, and the cool thing about that pattern here, as John was just really pointing out, is that it does work on all time frames. So, for example, because we're talking about the NQ right now, John, I'm sure that you have uh, noticed here that what we also have is a potential seventh wave top on the 30 minute time frame chart. 
So we got up to that level. That was at 2 o'clock this morning. And what we did see, when, folks, when you do generate a topping signal, what the expectation should be is price should pull back to support. And that's exactly what took place on a 30-minute time frame, support being the bottom of its profile, which was 1181253. Now, if we do see a close on a 30-minute basis below that level, that's going to suggest that the NQ would pull back to 11684. But this is how we use this in real time, so to speak, out here, although it was 2 o'clock in the morning. But take a look at it on a 30-minute basis. And as John had pointed out here on the weekly chart that you're looking at right now, you can see that letter G, and that's going to confirm uh, today out there. So, uh, so good points there. But I know you were calling about uh, ticker symbol IGV, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Would you please um, show me all the data you have on the weekly, daily uh, time frames on IGV? Uh, IGV is the uh, software ETF. Of course, it's dominated, dominated by Microsoft. Yes. It's got Adobe, Salesforce, and a bunch of small ones in it. Uh, that looks to a bottom that may lead higher if we do get a rally. I'd like to see Hey, John, see we're going to a break set. here. John, we're going to a break. We'll be right back with John in Philly in just a few moments. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for IGV for uh, John in uh, Philly. And IGV, as you pointed out, is the uh, tech sector uh, inside of the... Um not sure if it's a NASDAQ, but it is the uh, tech software, tech software uh, sector ETF. Now, right now in pre-market trading, uh, John, 
IGV is trading at the last tough trade fired off at 281. The importance and the reason that I bring that up is if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, first of all, we can see that the high form with the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. When I say it, conf uh, it uh, formed that, that's because when it, it confirmed with a bearish reversal candle. That was a bearish engulfing candle on a weekly basis. That was for November 19th. Now what we can see here, and there were some other roads momentum indicator signals as price moved down, folks, uh, that were triggered. One was the week of April 22nd. The next one was April 29th. But just because a pattern triggered, that was not the indication of a bottom. That requires a bullish reversal candle. That takes us to today. We can see that uh, this week, another roads momentum indicator signal triggered. And, John, we have what we have as the present time at 831 in the morning is a bull sash candle. So just like the top was formed with the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top, the bottom now is giving us a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. What I would have shared with you, and I will share this with you, is the likely price target is that red oscillator and change line. And that's at 280.17. In the pre-market trading, we're already above that. So I would be watching that 280.17 area. If price closes above that, we would need a second weekly close above that to really give us a confirmed change in trend for the weekly time frame. As you pointed out earlier with the NQ charts that we we're looking at, in the case of IGV on a weekly basis, John, the only week where price closed just slightly above that oscillator and change line was the week of April 1st. And that was a April Fool's joke as the very following week, price closed back below it. So it's why we need two consecutive weeks. But you're getting a, uh, so the next level, price trading at 281, the next level of resistance for it is at the 286.40 level. And that is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that weekly profile. And the bottom of which is at 266.92 and the top is at 335.09. And if we get a close above the 286.40 level, John, that really becomes the price target. Now, when we take a look, any questions about that weekly chart, the center portion that we're looking at, John? So far, so good, Steve. Okay. The daily chart is on the very right-hand side, and that confirmed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom signal last uh, last uh, Friday. And then we had a uh, – uh, and that's uh, – so that has a confirmation. Now, it is going to deal with profile resistance levels. That says there's a battle at 282.55. You clear that, then there's a battle at 290.51. You clear that, then there's a battle at 298.47. So you know where the defense is set up as price moves higher out here. And then if price can clear the 298.47 level, that gets us up into that 335 range. The monthly chart, you know, doesn't have any kind of a bottom signal. So I would, the way that I would interpret this is that we should expect and anticipate a counter trend move. One that should last two to three weeks as we get to that, uh, you know, the end of next week or possibly the week after that, we'll come back and reanalyze this. But it looks like maybe the work to the downside isn't done. But in the short term, when I say short term, I'm using the daily and the weekly time frames now. We've got a rally that should ensue. Now, it could turn into more than that, but I don't have any kind of bottoming signal on the uh, monthly time frame. And with price having broken through the support of the bottom of its profile as well as its breakout area, its chart suggests that over time, IGV wants to get down to the 196.09. So it's kind of saying that the bear market isn't over, but we should expect and anticipate the typical rally inside a bear market. Does that make sense? It does, Stephen. I'll just supplement everything you have said by saying this. Uh, of course, we do not know uh, if this very short-term low turns into something more substantial. As a, yes. an investor, speculator, trader, one way to handle it which is the way that I have done, was uh, bought it last week against Excellent. that uh, test of the May 12th low. Yes, yes. And now that you've got an edge, you've got the luxury of just holding it and, totally. uh, and then observing how far it rallies. If it turns out to be something more substantial, you've got a core long position that you can supplement with uh, added uh, uh, added uh, amounts. And uh, if it bounces and fails, then you can get away at worst with uh, a break even. So uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. that is one way to handle it. And that is the way I have handled it. Yeah, well, congrats to you on buying it last week as it was forming that bottom. Uh, that was wonderful. And, and as John was pointing out, it was testing a prior swing point. So that was helpful. Now, the chart that I've got on my screen here, John, is the is the S&P 500 and the weekly chart out there. And those black arrows, so since the high was formed, what we have seen is we have seen 
two counter trend moves, one that lasted two weeks, one that lasted three weeks. So if people are wondering when I say we have a rally that should last two to three weeks, where is that coming from? Well, this is one of the places. Now, most people would say, oh, Stevie, come on. You can't use two examples to tell me that that's how it's going to work. So I'd say, you know, you're absolutely right. It doesn't really come from just those two examples. If we take a look at the last significant bear market, and certainly March of 2020 is one that we could look at. But if we go back to the 2007-2009 bear market out here, if you take a look at all those black arrows, John, what you'll see is number two or number three. You see two to three week rallies. Now, when I say two to three week rallies, folks, I'm talking about where each week closes above the prior uh, close out there. And so you can see that it is very common to have that uh, from a time standpoint to have that two or three bar rally. Now, as we came out of the March lows out there, what started taking place? And this really feeds into what John was saying. He's taken a position. We don't really know if this bottom is more significant than the way that we're kind of uh, discussing it at this stage here, or at least the way that I'm discussing it, which is to expect only a two to three week rally. But if we see something more than that, that's going to tell us, John, that maybe adds to the vigor that this is more substantial than maybe what you and I are discussing, or at least what I'm discussing right now. Does this chart make sense and how I come up with the two yeah, to three no, weeks? That's, that's very helpful to add to, add to that. Uh, Steve, uh, I'll uh, thank you. I'll sign off. In parting, just restate one thing that uh, I have heard repeatedly. David White has mentioned this over, uh, over the years. Uh, repeatedly, and that is the the idea presented uh, by Paul Tudor Jones in particular. And, of course, he's not the only one to have said this, but when asked <laughs> somewhere along the line long ago, how did you pick that bottom? Yeah, I know what and you're going to say. And he said, well, I picked that bottom seven times. The first six were losers. The last one was the winner. Each loser was tiny, and yes. the winner was huge. So yes, um, yes. that's the only way, you know, a, a professional speculator, trader, that person, he or she knows, you don't know when the bottom is. You don't know when the top is. You, uh, you have Absolutely. to uh, uh, place your best, manage your risk, and uh, if you see the conditions, keep at mm -hmm. it. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we, you know, that's really what this show is about and, and all the shows here at TFNN is. And we use different tools. Some of you use uh, similar tools or the same tools out there. But uh, as you're pointing out, you know, we use these tools. They help us identify patterns that are typically present at either tops or bottoms. Doesn't mean they can't get violated. And that's why you use uh, position sizing. And if you use the proper position sizing, you can limit your risk out there. And that's really what John is referring to. And this is all this game here is really all about risk control. If we limit our risk, and I like to limit it to 1% of my uh, working capital uh, out there in a position size, um, you know, you're going to be in the game forever out there. So, John, always good to speak to you. Thanks for the call. I want you to have a fantastic weekend, and uh, we'll look forward, hopefully, to speaking to you again next week. Thank you, Steve. Bye. You bet. That was John from Philly. Uh, we've got the equity futures still pointed higher. Dow futures up 206, NASDAQ up 87. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, uh, there's a, a message posted inside the uh, den here from Frank Trades uh, from Massachusetts. And Frank, I want to just show you something. Frank's talking about the uh, New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. That is the uh, second, yeah, that's the second panel uh, that you're looking at on the screen. The top panel is the actual New York Stock Exchange. And so this might help you out here, Frank. There's a pattern that uh, forms that helps us to identify bottoms, and it's a divergent pattern, or at least cautions you against, uh, at least if you're using the New York Stock Exchange as an indicator for being long or short, um, it really helps you. So I've got these. If you take a look at the uh, red diagonal lines on the New York Stock Exchange on the price area, you can see that price is moving lower. If you look at the advanced decline oscillator, now that's the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the actual advanced decline line. So that's what it represents. So when you see these divergent patterns that are forming out here, for example, that's what uh, formed at this most recent bottom. It's really telling you about caution as well as when you get down into the minus 150, minus 250 level, that is telling you that price needs to work off that oversold condition. Now, what price did yesterday was it closed above the zero threshold line, closed at 5.34. If price closes above that level today, second consecutive close, that tells us that buyers have resumed control of the general markets. And we likely will see that advanced decline oscillator move up towards the overbought area, towards the plus 150 zone. So use that if you're if you're not familiar with that divergent pattern. It's very cool when it approach it when it, when it begins to form out there because it really tells you about being cautious to the uh, downside out there. Now let's go to our first request that has come in. This is from SNP, who wanted to take a look at uh, FANG, uh, the FANG ETF out here. So we've got the uh, monthly, the weekly, and the daily time frame out here. Let's start with the daily time frame for SNP. And yesterday formed bar number nine of a TD9 count. So what that tells us is that FANG should form a bottom between to, uh, yesterday and today. Now, let me just see where this is trading in the pre-market. If you give me a moment, it should be trading higher, but let me just uh, make sure, F-A-N-G. Um, trading out at 122.99, close at 119. So odds favor that you've got a TD9 count bottom. The other thing, S&P, that you look at here is you see that oscillator and change line, change from green to red. When that's changing from green to red, what that tells us is the price oscillator. Now, that's the difference when we'll take a look at a price between its 19 and 39-day exponential moving average out there. So when that tells us that the price oscillator, when it turns to red, tells us the price oscillator has now moved below the zero threshold line. Below zero, bearish, directionally speaking. Above zero, bullish, directionally speaking. Well, the oscillator and change line 
helps us because it tells us when that has taken place. Now, when that has taken place and you get that crossover, that's when my line will change colors. What you then wait for is you wait for a bottom signal. The bottom signal could be an A to B equals CD, could be a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, could be wave number seven, could be some pattern that you use. For me here, there would be the TD9 count. And so that's going to suggest that price is going to go approach that 139.06 level. So that's what the message that's coming from the daily time frame. And it would appear that that would be nothing more than just a counter trend move. What would say that this is more than a counter trend move would be for FANG. And I'll move over to the weekly chart now. We can see that price has closed last week. And now this week it appears, unless we get above 128, uh, which is the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. So as long as price closes below 128 today, we'll have two consecutive closes below that. And that tells us that counter trend moves will typically, if it's just a counter trend move, will typically find resistance at the center of its profile, 133.71. It's kind of the high for the week so far out here. Uh, but if price closes below 128, what this is suggesting to us, S&P, is that on a daily basis, expect a counter trend move because the weekly really wants to go target the 104.12 level. The monthly chart, however, is saying, hey, Stevie, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't really care about the weekly and the monthly time frames. I'm telling you that I found support. And support for the monthly time frame is that green oscillator and change line. So even though we have a TD9 count top out here, we have a sell the D point top. That means we have an A to B equals CD that, uh, at least on a monthly basis, has been confirmed with a, uh, a bearish engulfing candle out here. When you get a top, price is just simply, it's just telling us it wants to at least pull back and test support. Well, one support level is a green oscillator and change line. And that's, in fact, what has taken place so far. Now, if price were to close below that, that, by the way, is currently printing at, let's see, your monthly green oscillator and change line, at 117.04. If price were to close below that, then that's telling us that what price wants to do is go target 88.21 to 73.26. So to summarize, Fang, you should expect and anticipate a, a counter trend move. And that counter trend move should take us up towards the 139.06 level. That number is really going to change as price moves higher and lower. And uh, and if price does do that, gets up to 139.06, then it would overtake that 133.71 uh, area. And that would suggest perhaps more than a counter trend move out here. So those are the levels that I'd be watching. And I hope that that helps you out. Uh, let's go to our next question. Next question coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, uh, good morning to you. He's out in California, so he's up early. It's 547 in the morning there. And Brent wants to take a look at uh, Microsoft and the IBB. So let's put Microsoft up on our charts. We'll look again at these three time frames, monthly, weekly, and daily time frame. Well, let's go see what kind of signals Microsoft is generating for us. So in the case of Microsoft on a weekly basis, much like we were taking a look at for the NQ, you've got a TD9 count bottom. And what this suggests to you and I is that price should go target the 268.19. Now, Microsoft is stronger on a monthly basis because price is likely to get back above that 264.33 level. That's the bottom of its monthly profile. So it's only the 24th. Next week, we'll come back and see where that has closed. But if it's above 264.33, then support will have held on a monthly time frame. The daily time frame, Brent, shows that yesterday, price closed above the top of its daily profile, 257.85. When price is above the top of a profile, it is bare, is bullish, directionally speaking. That then suggests to you and I, again, that price should go target that weekly oscillator and change line at the 268.19 level. If price can overcome that, then you've got resistance at 273.91. And above that, it would be in the 293 to 294 level. And that's what Microsoft is communicating to us. Let's go take a look at IBB and see what it is. So you've got Microsoft is definitely bullish, weekly bullish, daily time frame is bullish, and the monthly isn't over yet, but it looks to me like it's still bullish from the standpoint of price holding support. Now we take a look at a monthly time frame chart here for the IBB, Brent. Man, you've got a monthly TD9 count bottom that is very likely to form. The only thing that would that would say that this has not formed would be on a monthly basis, a close above 126.07. So as long as that doesn't happen, so you're really, you're really pulling for between now, if you're long IBB, what you're really pulling for is for price not to close above that on a monthly basis. If it closed above that, it negates the uh, pattern. Uh, that would be the TD9 count pattern and actually suggest a move and a pullback all the way back to 92.45. Let's go with the assumption right now that you've got a monthly TD9 count bottom. What you have on a weekly basis is a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That confirmed back here with a uh, bullish hammer candle the week of May 13th. 
Now, this uh, last week, that was tested and rejected. I don't know if it was on lighter volume or not, but right now what we have is if price can overcome, this is the IBB, if it can overcome its recent highs, that would be in the 119.50 level. And right now, IBB is trading at, in the pre-market, at 118.90. So if price can overcome, that's the recent high out here from May 27th. If price can overcome that level, this is on a weekly basis, again, 119.50, that's going to tell us or confirm that what uh, IBB wants to do is make its move to 135.57. That would be the top of its weekly profile. Of course, the daily has uh, that confirmation. Oh, well, oh, boy, well, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. The daily closed above the top of its daily profile two days ago and had some nice follow through yesterday. So yeah, it's this most recent highs out here, Brent, you get above those, it's off to the races. Will it form a monthly TD9 count bottom? That I don't know. But you've got bottoms at this stage here across the board inside of the IBP. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Good morning, folks. Uh, so uh, if you're listening, good morning. If you're listening at the normal time, it's good afternoon. And uh, followed uh, by this show is going to be uh, your favorite polar bear, David White and Tom, who will take us home. And of course, if you're listening live, it's 8.54 in the morning. And we have made today's show very pertinent, I believe, for the uh, one o'clock hour out there. Then uh, uh, we've got Tommy O'Brien coming up with the uh, morning market uh, kickoff. Right now, kicking off the markets, you've got uh, U.S. equity futures trading higher. Dow's up about uh, six tenths percent, 190 points. The Nasdaq up seven tenths or 86. The uh, ES Mini is up 7 tenths or 25. And the Russell's up about 11 points or 6 tenths percent. Markets in Asia closed higher last night. Markets in Australia closed higher. Markets in Europe are trading higher. Odds favor, markets are going to close higher inside of the U.S. Gold's off 4 bucks a peck. Let's go take a look at our 9 panel market update chart just to leave you with the kind of an overview uh, from a number of different instruments here. So the ES Mini, it's uh, next uh, resistance level is the top of its daily profile. That's at 38.42. If we get a close about 38.42. That tells us about a change in trend. And then the next target is 38.87. It will approach 3887 if that spot volatility is able to close below or move below the 50-day expense moving average. That's at 2810. So we need that proof out there. Why? Because and I don't have the uh, time to switch over to take a look at the chart out there. But those of you who are longtime listeners, you know that when the spot volatility is above the 50-day expense moving average, prepare for a that's really a bearish directional signal. And when price is below that, it's a bullish directional signal. The NQ is trading right now above the top of its uh, daily profile on my black background charts, 11,716. Suggest a price target of 11,891 next. That's where the sellers are. US dollar index is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. That's between 103.62 and 105.56. The uh, gold is trading with inside its or consolidating with inside its daily profile between 18.13 and 18.79. Silver is uh, struggling. It's trading below the bottom its weekly profile. Let's see where it closes off the week. Lights Week Crude forming a new daily profile. Support at 103.51. Resistance 113.42. Natural gas today is going to complete a TD9 count bottom. If price is able to close above 635, that suggests a move to 720 out there. The 30-year treasury dealing with the uh, sellers that reside between 136.26 and 138.09. Folks, have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you on... Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that